But we're going to start off in Isaiah 22, 22. Okay, there's a little double-double for you. It says, the house of David I will lay on his shoulders, so he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. Listen, I love Isaiah twenty two twenty two because it's talking about opening. You know what's funny? When you come to this revival hub from Arkansas, you get off at exit 2, 2, 2 uh, to come. And so what I really believe is I want you to think about America over the last 12 months. It has declined drastically. And it's not the political world that's going to turn it around. It is the church world that is going to turn it around. It is us that is going to turn around. And it's not in good services that's going to turn it around. It is in the place of prayer, fasting, declarations, and decrees that's going to start turning some things around. And so this is not the most important time of the week. Your prayer time at your house is the most important time of the week. And when we say something like a double's coming... You're going to produce more than you've ever produced for the kingdom of God. If you used to write one book a year, get ready for two. While she was talking about businesses, you and I might lose some of you here. Have you ever thought about having a, a income just to sow? No, maybe. Have you ever had an income just for retirement? See, it's thinking differently. You know, a lot of times we try to just meet our own needs, but what about other people that are down and out and who are on the heart of God? You need to double your mindset for thinking because there's a lost, hurt, and dying world, and everybody's praying about helping somebody. But who's doing it? I mean, if you see somebody that's down and out and they need 100 bucks, I mean, I'm going to pray the Lord blesses you. No, no, no. Who's the people that can actually do something to help them? You know, you see somebody who's lame. Do you have enough faith to lay hands? Oh, you're going to double your faith this year. You're going to double your freedom this year. The things that held you in bondage last year will not hold you this year moving forward. Okay? So, I love that scripture in Isaiah 22, 22. I'm going to talk to you today about when we choose God. You know, a lot of people, they say that they're believers and Christians, but I'm telling you, you're going to hear this statement a lot over the next year. This, this phrase I'm about to tell you will age well. You're going, to, you're going to hear people talk about Christians in name only. Okay? You know, the Bible says every tree is known by their Facebook post. No, boy, it's that fruit. You ain't, if you ain't got no fruit, you ain't a, if you don't have an apple, you're not an apple tree. I don't know what you are, but you are going to be known by your fruit. And there was a season in the body of Christ, everybody was caught up in titles. There's two titles. You are a son or you are a daughter of God. There ain't no other 39 genres or anything like that, genders. Is you a son or you are a daughter of the Most High God? That's your title. Hope you like it. We all got the same one or two. Okay, listen, when we choose God in every situation in our lives, our lives start to change drastically, and he is a God that rewards you, okay? My wife and I have an amazing relationship, okay? It is a give and take. Not one just gives and not one just takes. Your relationship with God like that, a good father cannot resist giving to his kids, And so if a lot of people aren't walking in what the Lord offers, there's something broken in the relationship. Anybody with me today? He is a God. Listen, I love my kids so much, and and, and sometimes I just find ways to bless them. I find ways to bless them because I love them so much. Our God is the same way. But when you think getting something from God is just for you, you've missed the whole point. I mean, you've missed the whole point. When you receive more and abundantly, you got to say, all right, God, let me ask you this. Next time you get a blessing, ask the Lord, is it for you? Was it for some? I got broken from that one time. I remember somebody gave me a, you know, a four-finger handshake. You know what I'm talking about, y'all? It's that holy handshake, and they gave me a a $100 bill. And I was like, praise the Lord, and I heard Holy Spirit say, that's not for you. I'm like, you see my bank account? That's back in the day. And uh, the Lord said, no, but there's somebody you will come in contact with. And I, I gave them a handshake, and I, I, it, was, it was hard. It was hard giving them that $100. But God just used me. When God uses you in finances, you learn to sow. When God gives you wisdom, you learn to sow. People set on prophetic words. People set on businesses. 
You're doing, you're doing a disservice to the kingdom of God. That's why you're going to double-double in what you produce this year. If, listen, I love apples, if you can't tell. But if you have all these apple trees and you gain all these apples, you can't eat them all. They'll rot and die. Some of you are setting on stuff that is dying because you're unwilling to give them away. This is the year that when we choose God with all of our heart, it, it's going to be completely different. You're going to see different. I'm telling you, you are going to act different this year. You are going to steward different. When you, lo- when you learn to steward things differently, it's, it's just going to be different. When we learn to walk in the favor of God, what? When we learn to walk in the, the favor of God is available for all of us, but some people don't know how to walk in it. If, when you learn to walk in it, you're going to receive it, okay? It's the whole thing about a relationship. I mean, there's so many times I, I come home um, and, and Autumn has bought me a new shirt, a new belt, um, or, or, new, or new shoes or something. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Or coffee. She had me a coffee. And, and so, and then there's times that I do all these nice things for her. Why? It's a relationship. When you give of your life and your resources to the kingdom of God, he's going to bless you in ways. It might be, he might bless somebody in your family that was on your heart. Yeah, that was for you. You hear me? There's people that you pray for that God will bless, and he did it for you because he heard your heart. He heard you cry out for them. And, and, and there's a, something happened to somebody in my family the other day, and I'll be honest, I, I ugly cried. Y'all ever ugly cried? I mean, you, you snotted, you, you sniffled, you look like a little, just, you just ugly cried because I've been praying for this person because for years and years and years they needed a breakthrough. And uh, I saw that person. I haven't seen them like this in years. They were so different because I've been praying for them. Listen, when you walk in favor, it, 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 it impacts everybody around you. God understand. Here's, I'm, I'm about to read a ton of scriptures. And when I mean a lot, just be, bear with me. I'm about to read a whole lot of the word. God understands you more than you understand yourself or your situation. So quit trying to figure it out and just let God be God. Okay, when you know him, you'll let him be who he is, and he is God. Okay, you're you, he's God, he created you. Let him do what he needs to do in your life. That is for somebody. Let God carry you through the situation. All right, Psalms 139, 1 through 4. It says, Lord, you know everything there is about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and my soul. You understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book. That should scare some people. And it says, you know all of the words I'm about to speak before I even start the sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey begins. If he knows every step before you take it, why are you worried about the next step? Do you not think that a good father already knows? He knows everything before you. Everything. So, so quit being worried about it. God created us for fellowship. When is the last time you had fellowship with him? Okay, you know one of my frustrations? When I'm talking to somebody and they're always on their phone, I just stopped talking. And uh, I walked out of a, a lunch appointment one time because of that. And I, I think it took that dude two and a half days to realize I was gone. Um, he got on his phone and, and I just got him and walked out. And so the thing about it is, is if you have a real relationship with God, when is the last time you sat down and allowed him to speak? Leonard Ravenhill said the best prayer meeting is the one that you don't say anything in. That's why when we have prayer on Tuesday night at 7 p.m., our first hour, there's no corporate prayer. We're just all by ourselves. Why? I'm praying. I'm asking the Lord to speak to me. Then we come together and pray corporately. But you'll be amazed at what he'll tell you if you'll just be quiet for a minute. I'm preaching to me, not you. But when you really listen, it is amazing what he'll speak to. God created us for fellowship and he has given us all things. If we in return will give him everything, our lives will look 100% completely different. First Thessalonians 5.23. Sorry, Joseph, I'm skipping around. Um, it says, now may the God of peace and harmony set you apart, making you completely holy. Okay, completely holy. How are you completely holy? Glad you asked. Glad you asked. It says, and may your entire being, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, we know what the spirit is. We know what the soul is. The soul is two things. It is the mind and the motion. The body is our temple. That's four areas that you need to make sure is right. 
okay? If you want to be completely holy, you need to make sure your spirit man is good. You need to make sure that your mindset is right. You need to make sure your soul is good. It means emotionally you're not carrying a bunch of baggage. You ever seen that person that's trying to preach? You ever seen that person that's running through the airport carrying a bunch of bags? Okay, this is not funny, but it was. This lady was running, and, 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 and they kept calling last call. She literally drops her bags and takes off running. So the, okay, she was, I'm dropping my baggage. I'm about to make my flight. And now some people carried her bags. And we got bags and said, look, this is this lady's bags. But, but she finally dropped her baggage because she was going to make her destination. Because being completely holy is spirit, mind, emotions, body. You need to get everything positioned. You know, I really don't watch NASCAR. Uh, but I, I've seen some because Marty likes it. But man... Do you not think they've went over their car over and over and over and over to make sure every single thing? Those cars are fast. I mean, fast. Why? Because everything is on point and in place. What if we were like that? What if we made sure everything was completely holy and on point? Now, God understands that we're flesh and blood and we're going to mess up and he gives us grace. But if you're aggressively pursuing holiness, man, everything starts to change in your life. And then it says, and be kept completely flawless in all of this for Jesus, the anointed one. Allow Holy Spirit. All right, I do this every day, every morning and every night. Holy Spirit, show me anything that I, key word, I take responsibility. I've allowed to creep in a thought, an emotion, something happened to me and I responded the wrong way. I do that occasionally. And show me what it is. And he shows me because a good father will show sons and daughters what they're doing wrong so they can get back to walking in a better relationship with him. See, the closer you are to God, the better of a witness you're going to be for him and the more that you can do. And a lot of times, if we just accept the life of repentance and, and daily that relationship we'll be able to double our effectiveness for the kingdom of God. Um, I'm not old by any means, but I'm getting just a little bit older. And as I'm getting older, there's more people that I personally know are passing away. And you know the saddest thing at funerals? When I've had lunch with somebody, when I've sat down and talked with somebody, and they shared all their dreams with me, and then they died, and there was a lot of dreams they never got to, and, and when we talked, they were like, I just got to adjust a few things in my life. And I don't want to, I want to die on empty. I, I don't want anybody to say, oh, man, Joe shared this one dream. And if I don't get everything out, I have it set up to go further. Now, let me ask you, this is just, I'm just going to throw this out there too. The Bible says that a wise, how many people in here think you're wise? I'm setting y'all up. Okay, how many of you think you're wise? Okay, the Bible says a wise person leaves an inheritance for his kids' kids. Not his kids. His kids' kids. One time my dad is a joke. I hope it was a joke. But he said, yeah, I'm going to leave, leave a, an inheritance for my grandkids. That's what, the, that's what the Bible says, son. I'm not leaving you nothing. It's kind of, he was joking in, in Jesus' name. But he said, I'm leaving it for my grandkids. And, uh, and uh, it was kind of funny. But, you know, the, the thing is, what kind of inheritance are you going to leave for your, your kids, your grandkids, your spiritual kids, people that you mentor? What, what are you going to leave for them? How much wisdom are they going to gain because of you? How much knowledge are they going to have because of you? How much understanding are they going to have because of you? And are you going to make their life easier in a way? That, like, you know, like, like we're on the floor right here, and this is the platform that says step up. Everybody that you can help step up in life, that's what we're doing for the kingdom of God. We're trying to help people move forward in life. There's a lot of people I know right now that have amazing God dreams, but they have no money. They're trying to find ways to get the money to start on their God dream. They can't just start on the dream. They have to find the finances for it. What if we can teach people to make the finances to do the dream. I've talked to some missionaries this week, and they're just like, they, they call me, and they're like, Joe, I mean, we have all this dream, but we don't have finances for it. Everybody that say they're going to support us, they didn't support us. I know a lot of people that have these ministries that they're, they're moving forward in, and people aren't, aren't helping them. And so I say, man, take up the responsibility for yourself. You know, find a way. And so when you keep moving with God, we got to be completely set apart to the things of the Lord to receive the double 
that God has for us. And I believe that some of you, God's going to give you creative wisdom that you're going to learn how to, well, put it in another gear. Y'all know back in the day we had those four and five speeds. And, boy, I don't know about you. I had glass packs on my three-quarter ton, and I would rack them jokers loud. And I would push that clutch all the way in. I would go back to second. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The girls are like, what? And the guy's like, yeah, boy. And so, and, and get everything you can out of every gear in life. And just every season of your life, go for the things of God. And I got to go back to, to Psalms 139. It says, You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Now, understand this. When a child, which a a child in the womb is a real person, okay? There's a real person. We hate abortion because you're you're killing a, a person, okay? A child in the womb is in a secret place where God is molding them. When a child comes out, they have to learn or be taught what the secret place is in the natural. That's the problem. They develop, and you ever seen just a cute little fat baby come out, and they've been in the secret place, so they look like they're supposed to. But then as we get older, no one teaches us then to get to a secret place. And that's why prayer is the secret place that you got to get to with the Lord. And so there's two secret places, the womb, and then you got your place of prayer. And it says, carefully, skillfully, you shape me from nothing into something. Same thing about your prayer, just like as a baby is being created and the nine-month process. You know, you may think that you're nothing, but you can become something in the secret place because God speaks to every person that will consecrate their self to the things that he has for them. True? True. All right, then it goes on to say, you saw who you created me to be before I even became me. Before I even saw the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. If he has a book written about Joe, Joe Dawson, there is one person in this world that can find the full completion of that book and that is me. That is why I don't believe in excuses or negativity because every excuse, okay, here's my example. This is the book. I want it to end like this. I want it to be complete. Every excuse you make, you go, sorry, that page will probably never be fulfilled. Another excuse, sorry, that page will probably never be fulfilled. Uh Uh-oh. Well, Bible's been read a few times. And they keep turning like this until some people may end up like this. You got to stay in there with the Lord on the daily basis to reach what he's called you to do. All right. Psalms 139, 17, 18. Every single moment you were thinking of me. You know, we talk about him being the lover of our soul. You know, when, when two people fall in love, I've been in love with my wife for, from the second I saw her. And you know what? She's on my mind constantly. You ever see my screensaver? It, it's, it's like her, her whole face is my screensaver. She's like, Joe, that is a big picture of my face. I said, I love it. And, uh, and so that's how the Lord is towards you. He is the what? The lover of what? Our soul. He's always thinking about you. Always. And he says, every single moment you are thinking about me, Psalms 139, 17, 18, it says, how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me. Constantly in your every thought, you are on his mind. Oh God, you your desire towards me are more than the grains of sands on every shore. On every shore. When I wake in each morning, you're still there with me. Every day when you wake up, he's there with you. Good Lord Almighty, that right there is some good stuff. Every day when you wake up. Now, let's go over to 1 Corinthians. It says, after all, who can really see into a person's heart and know his, his hidden impulses except that person's spirit? You can hide a lot of things from a lot of people. You could even put on a church face. But I tell you what, you will never reach your full potential with God until you get vulnerable with him. He knows everything, so don't, you don't lie to him. I actually had some people... And one time they were in prayer, and I said, dude, you lying to God in prayer. And they're like, well, I couldn't pray the truth. I said, no, just get vulnerable. Get in that secret place. And, you know, a lot of times our minds have been warped with wrong theology. you got to understand that he is a God that loves and forgives. you got to get just get vulnerable. It says, and so it is with God. 
his thoughts and his secrets are only fully understood by the Spirit. By the Spirit, your natural flesh can't figure it out. Even your mind and your emotions cannot completely figure out God. So when, what this scripture is saying is if you try to figure it out, you won't be able to do it. Why? His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. There's a lot of time you just got to say, Holy Spirit, let's go. Um, Jeff had a song on his playlist this morning in pre-service prayer at 9 o'clock back there. And it was talking about, God, we need a fresh outpouring. We need a fresh outpouring in our own personal lives. And when we allow the Spirit to take over, our natural mind will be at peace. If your natural mind is not at peace, let the Spirit of the Lord take over. Ephesians 1 Oh, Lord, I'm going to read the majority of it. This is too good. Well, we'll start at 17. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who imparted to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom. Okay. If he, and he did, imparted the spirit of wisdom to you, if you are operating in the spirit of wisdom, your natural mind does not have dominion over you. It doesn't. If the spirit, like, like when I make, like I make a wise decision, somebody says, man, that was good. I'm like, oh, believe me, it wasn't me. I, pr- I promise. I promise it was not me. It was me listening to Holy Spirit because I'm not that smart and I ain't that good. And uh, you just got to understand that when, when stuff like that, if you ever just had that thought, like, whoo, a business idea. You're saying, oh, God, use me. He tells you to go forgive somebody from 20 years ago. Like, that's not what I meant, Lord. I don't like that person. I don't care. Go ask them, to, you know, for forgiveness. All right? Some of y'all might not like this. We're, we're having fun today, though. And, and it says, who imparted to you the riches of the spirit? I just can't get. Okay, it, it gets better. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him. Him. He has given you the spirit of wisdom and revelation for what? To know him. You actually can know the ways and the things and the revelation of God. You can walk and give out the revelation of God because you know him in wisdom. You know what? There's a lot of people in politics, a lot of famous people, actors and actresses. If they could tap into this, they could shift whatever they're called to. School systems, churches, families, if they got this scripture and they walked in that, they could change their school. They could change the place they work. They could change their family. It all flows through that. And all of that depends on their intimacy with him. To the amount of wisdom and knowledge you have depends on him. When people say, I'm waiting on God, I'm like, no, don't use that anymore. You ain't waiting on God. He's waiting on you. And, uh, yeah, I know I hate that one too sometimes. But, but he's growing us. I mean, he, he's growing us. And so, verse 18, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. Now, none of us have experienced the full revelation of the hope of his calling in our lives. We're learning. We're constantly learning. If you're not learning every week, listen, we we never graduate. There is no diploma in faith. There is no graduation, no no master's, no doctorate in, in this. I mean, we're always learning. Until the day of our natural death, we are still learning. Then we get to heaven, we're going to still be learning. And so we're always learning about the things of the Lord. Okay, And then it says, until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, that is the wealth, wait a minute, God's got wealth? Oh yeah, the wealth of his glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. He puts wealth in you that the world needs. Every one of you have so much inside of you, the world needs your wealth, your wealth of wisdom, your wealth of knowledge. Some of y'all might have wealth in finances. Some people need to look at your life 
and say, I want a business like yours. I want a marriage like yours. I want a, my kids to grow up and act like yours. I, I want a steward. I want a, like I, I saw one guy one time when I was younger, I, th- I threw some tires out at Cooper. And this one guy said, man, I got a lot of respect for you. And I said, why is that? He said, because this guy said, my, my mission today is to make JoJo mad. And uh, he said, you're just like, I ain't getting mad at you. And, and this guy, what happened is I was throwing these tires, and he pulled up to this red line that I wasn't allowed to cross. And he just looked at me for about five minutes. And then the, a, a buzzer went off for break. And for five minutes, he looked at me. He could have brought my tires. I needed like four or five tires to, to finish my trailer. And he wouldn't do it. And when he came back, he's like, dude, I cannot believe you didn't get mad. I said, no, man, I have my Gideon right here. You just gave me some extra time to read. And, oh, I was, I was pretty frustrated inside. But uh, Holy Spirit had my tongue. And so, listen, you can walk in wisdom and knowledge. Okay, now I want to get into the, the part that I really want to talk about. Verse 19. Are y'all ready for this? Some of y'all, when Malachi said double, double, listen, this is your word. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. How many of y'all got a ruler? How many of y'all got a measuring stick? Man, that ain't big enough. You can't measure this. It's immeasurable. I don't care how you want to measure anything. You cannot measure the power of God made available to those who have faith. Now, here's the deal. Then your lives will be an advertisement for this immense power as it works through you. What did that just say? It said in the word that God will use your personal life as an advertisement for his power. When God uses your life, you better understand what fasting and humility is. If you want to have what Malachi was talking about, a double in your life, you better have double humility. You want to heal the sick, you better have double faith. You got two kids, you better have double finances. Uh, And so you just got to realize in life, if you want God to use you to the amount he raises you up, you got to learn to go down. How low can you go? You got to learn how to go down. You got to learn how to fast. You got to learn how to pray. And somebody said, well, I'm asking God, uh, should I'm, I'm praying about if I should fast. I said, you should fast to see if you should fast. Uh, and I said, look, when, when God elevates you in something, when he gives you a job that's over your head, you ain't got to pray. Just die to the flesh and live in the spirit, and you can start to move forward with him. Verse 20, Ephesians uh, 1.20, it says, that this is the same power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead. Listen, you have the same power available to you. Is the same power, the same power in you. What, what are you doing with it? I mean, you can have a beautiful lamp, and if you don't plug it in, it's no good. Guys, some of y'all just got to plug in. And, man, I had some more stuff I'm going to share, but I'm not... But I do want to share one small thing. When you have an encounter with God, when you have an encounter, you will receive revelation. Talk about the revelation. When you receive revelation, you will cultivate a relationship. And out of that ongoing relationship, you know what you're going to have? You're going to have a constant flow of manifestation in your life. Constant manifestation in your life. Now, one of the words by somebody that I like listening to, her name is Lena Vazer, and she she had a word, and she released this. and said, do not despise the stretching. It is going to make way for the fire and the flood of his spirit. Well, Well, think about that word right there, that don't despise the stretching. The the stretching is Jesus being led of the spirit to go to the wilderness for 40 days. That's a stretching, Okay. When the Holy Spirit leads you to a stretching, understand there's something coming that is greater in your life. When we lay down our life for the things of God, everything starts to change. Um, I'm going to read one more word. Um, Sean Boats had this word this week. He just said, God wants to raise up people who, who will hear his voice and know how to influence the world around them with the kingdom that is within us. It's already in you. But when you build a relationship with him, he pulls it out of you. 
and everybody around you is blessed. Okay? Hank Kuhlman had a word for 2022, and he just said that this is going to be the, the year of the spoil. And what's cool about that word is, is in prayer, um, the Lord gave me just a, a word this, this Tuesday night about I want you to go and consider this a recovery year. Go get everything and recover all. And in this word, he just, he just wrote out some things, and he said in 2021, you know, a lot of people, they fought, and the ones that stood, you're going to see the reward of the Lord. And the cool thing about all this is when you're really consecrated to the Lord and you receive what some people call a double or whatever, you don't have any personal agenda in mind. You use it for the kingdom. You know, the parable of the talents, the one that had the one, they didn't understand it at all. The one that had two, four, five, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred, 10, 20, 50, 100, they understood it. You ever seen somebody who's prospering in a certain area? They're constantly prospering. Somebody who prospers um, in multiple businesses, they understand it. Somebody who their, their natural health is in line, well, they understood something. They figured it out. Somebody who is a, an amazing like, like builder. I was talking to a builder the other day, and he told me how many projects he had going. I'm like, how in the world do you manage so many projects? He said, well, I figured it out, how to keep them all rolling. It's not one talent. It's multiple things. You know, what would you think if I told you that you're your own biggest limitation? 79% of the people here nodded their head. So what, what I do every day is I start every day in private prayer because I know that if I can get Joe Joe Dawson out of the way, the manifestation of the kingdom of God is going to happen in some shape or form that day. But I remember one time, uh, I just, I haven't done this but a few times in the last long time, but I just, I woke up late and uh, I had a sinus headache and I really didn't pray a whole lot. And my middle child, Judah, that morning she said, man, dad, you didn't have your quiet time this morning, did you? And uh, I said, what do you mean? She said, well, if you did, it wasn't a very good one. And uh, I just kind of looked at it and I thought, wait a minute, I have my prayer time every morning. But the one day that I had a horrible sinus headache, I just, I, just didn't, I just didn't feel good. And you know what? I didn't go and die to the flesh that day. I allowed the flesh to reign that day. And, and when she said that, I was like, man, I, I don't care what I feel like. I've got to be. I don't care how early I have to get up. Recently, I had to catch a flight. at, at um, I think I had to leave the house at 430. You know, I still got up just a few minutes early just to spend some time with him, just to spend a little bit of time. Because... Who knows that one person that you're going to come in contact with that needs a word from God. They need encouragement from the Lord. They just, they just need something. And if, you, if the Spirit is winning in your life that day, you can be the voice that changes everything. So that's it. We're going to pray. Uh, got quite a few visitors here today. This is how we kind of do things. Um, the band's going to play up, and they're going to sing the most amazing song over you. They're going to hear from the Lord. If you want prayer, we'll have people on the prayer team. Um, I encourage you to stay right there. Pull a pen and a paper out because you're going to hear something. Pull your phone out. Get your notepad out on your phone. Get ready to hear something. But I encourage everybody to lean into the voice of the Lord today. Lean in and hear what the Lord is saying because he's speaking, and it's going to be, it's going to be powerful. Amen. So, Holy Spirit, I declare right now in the name of Jesus that every person is going to hear from you, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to be strong upon them today, Lord. Holy Spirit, I just declare that you're the one that makes every crooked way straight, that you make every broken thing whole. And I declare that, my friends, that, that they're going to hit their mark, they're going to hit their destination, and, Lord, that they're going to, I just even see like the Lord saying that, that he's going to put you on the road. One, one set of tires on the road, one is in the ditch. He's going to put some people on the road today. And Lord, I just declare that we stay so hungry for you, that we have such a heart for you, that, our, that we hunger and thirst for righteousness like never before, that our number one desire in this world is you, God. We seek your face. Every day we seek you, Lord. And we obey and we follow in your mighty name.